Hey guys, it's going off grid. And in this video, we're going to be adding a 100 amp BMS, like the one uh, batteryhookup.com has on their website. Uh, we're going to be adding this 12S BMS with Bluetooth capability to these uh, 12S Mercedes batteries. I believe these are around 900 watt hours. And we're going to just, we're going to be shrink wrapping these together so they become one battery. And it's going to be a 100 amp. 48 volt uh, battery, so it'll, it'll output quite a bit of power, around 4,000 watts, continuous, and uh, well, for how long, I don't know, you only have about uh, 1.8 kilowatts of storage, so a little Bluetooth dongle, so you can uh, see everything on your phone with the app, and then hopefully I can incorporate this into it, this meter, uh, see if I can heat shrink this all nicely so we can uh, have a good uh, little battery okay so I got just a few zip ties here just to hold the battery together while I work on it now what I'm going to do is I'm taking the balance lead here and I'm going to be soldering the balance lead to each tab all the way across so uh, let's see this side's positive so I'm going to start from this side and be at first negative and I go positive, 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 positive. You're going to the positive of each next cell all the way across. And then you're going to do the same thing on here. And then connecting them together. So I'm not going to have any fusing between my two cells because these batteries are very well balanced. Uh, and I'm not going to, I'm always going to be around when this is being used. This is actually going to be used outside a lot. Uh, and then I'm going to have one thermostat a thermistor on each battery so it'll be, I'll be able to see the temperature of each individual battery pack and uh, yeah I just gotta wait for my soldering iron to warm up and I'm gonna start soldering on here we'll see how hard it is because sometimes the nickel coated ones are very hard to solder to or aluminum or whatever they are sometimes the tabs are aluminum so We'll see how that goes, and I'll let you guys know if it's uh, easy or hard or what's up. Great, so what I got so far is I took some sandpaper over the terminals, and I sanded them well until I could see some copper color, as you can see. Just a little bit. And then with a large soldering iron, like this one, this is a 200 watt. I have a 60 watt, but that one was not able to get these warm enough. So with a 200 watt soldering iron, these are fairly cheap, they're like 30 bucks on eBay. I'm able to heat them up enough and actually solder to these terminals because there's copper underneath them. And I found uh, putting a big, big blob helped transfer the heat from the huge uh, soldering iron to the terminals. And that's how I was able to do it. These are all solid now, like... You can't get them off. Now I'm just doing my balance lead connections, and then I'm just going to cut and bridge these to the next one. And then all my balance wires will be done, and I'm ready for my main connections, my main positive and negative to the BMS. All right, so now I started bridging the connections across, and I'm kind of cheating, and it's working really well. I'm just taking the soldering iron, placing it directly on the wire. If I can show you this. It melts the plastic around it and forces the wire in. And the connection is extremely strong. So I just put it down and I just plop the soldering iron right on top. And just burn right through the, the rubber coating. And it's working really well so far. And it's really fast. So I'm going to continue this and see how that turns out. Okay, and we're done with all the connections that have anything to do with balancing we got the connector on this side this worked very well doing this i have checked the connections they are all connected quite nicely um, it's able to share current between these wires and uh, we are ready to hook up the bms now there we go okay now that we got the top insulated with some of this high temperature tape and we got our BMS wires coming out the top I cut some of this uh, almost like uh, plastic cardboard it's a, uh, stuff they make signs out of and whatnot and put that on the top then I'm going to take my BMS 
put my BMS on the very top and I might put this meter on the top or I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure this out and see what looks the best. But uh, yeah, she's coming along. Now I just place some uh, double-sided 3M tape on the, like I like to call, plastic cardboard. And I'm going to flip that over and stick that down. And I'll put some more on the other side to hold the BMS. Yeah, and let's get to it. So now I have the BMS underneath the shrink wrap and on top of the battery. I just plugged the cables in and connected to those lugs. You can see with the copper washer there and right there. It's under here. And I'm just slowly shrink wrapping this. I'm not very good at it, but uh, we'll see how it turns out at the end. And I will have a shrink wrapped battery and uh, with BMS and everything. I might put terminals on the top for now, but. Uh, or later, I mean, for now, I'm just going to have ring terminals coming out uh, to go to an inverter. Anyways, I'll update you guys when I'm done this. All right, so this is kind of the final product. Not completely. I could heat the top up a bit more to get rid of these bubbles. I'm probably going to do that very shortly. What I did with this uh, stuff is I just, as I heated up, I folded it in on itself instead of cutting it. So it's got a little bit more protection on the sides. It's not super pretty, but it's better than having everything exposed. Now I have a BMS controlled. This is the two negatives that come off the BMS. I'm going to bolt that to one of these like this. And that's going to go to an inverter. This is going to go to another inverter or the other side of the inverter. The BMS is on the top. And when you connect to the Bluetooth, which is right here, you can see the light come through... Um, the blue shrink uh, shrink wrap and uh, you can see that you are in fact connected this is approximately a 1.8 kilowatt hour battery 48 volts uh 50.2 max charge down to uh like 40 uh, 40 volts is pretty much dead and most uh most 48 volt inverters will work on this i think there's only about 20 percent remaining capacity or 10 percent remaining capacity after 40 volts so there's, you're not leaving much on the table and it's actually good for the battery for you not to drain it at low anyways but now you got like it looks pretty good i think it looks just like a a car battery essentially except for it's a lot lighter this i'd say weighs ooh, what does this weigh let's see ah it's pretty heavy because it's got uh it's got the metal case and everything around it, so it still weighs probably like 30 pounds, but uh, compared to a lead acid battery, that's still very light. Anyways, let's uh, start charging and uh, discharging this thing.